Hello students, welcome to Learners Planet. This is our theory session 27 of basic concepts of organic chemistry and in this session we will be continuing with the SN2 reaction mechanism. Uh, students, we started in details about the mechanism in the previous session that how this reaction takes place. This SN2 reaction is a concerted one step reaction. There is no intermediate formed but of course there is a transition state. Right? Now in this session we will be studying about the steric hindrance if it is there in the molecule. Because see here the nucleophile reacts from the back side. So the molecules or the groups bonded to the carbon atom on which there is attack by the nucleophile affects the rate of reaction. All right. So we will be studying about the steric hindrance. We will also study about the nucleophilicity of the nucleophiles as well as about the leaving group. See, the leaving group thing is the same. The weaker is the base, the better is the leaving group. Right? See, if the base is weaker, it will stabilize the negative charge on end. So let's start this session with the uh, steric hindrance or with the effect of steric hindrance on the rate of nucleophilic reaction. See the steric effects. What is actually steric effect? It is, a, it is nothing but the repulsion between the groups. See when two groups will, will come closer what will happen? Of course these groups say if there is more number of methyl groups or any group is there, these groups are having large number of electrons around it. Now the electrons when they will come closer or very close, so what will happen? There will be repulsion between them. Right? That, that affects the reactivity of the reactant in SN2 reaction. Now the steric effects, let us see this. See, the bulky substituents present on the carbon atom undergoing substitution decreases the reactivity of reactant in SN2 reaction due to steric repulsion at the transition state. Now how it happens, let us see. It is just a statement which you can get in any book. But now I am going to elaborate this. See for example, neopentyl halide is 1 degree alkyl halide, still it is unreactive towards SN2 reaction. Right? Now what I told you in the previous session was that the reactivity of the alkyl halides for SN2 reaction is the methyl halide more than 1 degree alkyl halide, right? which is further more than 2 degree alkyl halide and which is further more than 3 degree alkyl halide. Why so? Because the attack by the reagent takes place from the back side of the molecule. So these alkyl groups which are present, they will hinder that attack. But in case of SN1 reaction students this is a very very important concept that is why I am just repeating it. In SN1 reaction an intermediate is formed. What is that intermediate? That is a carbocation. So the reaction or the rate of the reaction depends on the stability of carbocation. Right? Now which carbocation is more stable? A 3 degree carbocation is more stable than a 2 degree carbocation and it is further more stable than 1 degree carbocation. And this is far more stable than methyl carbocation. Right? So the stability depends or the rate of the reaction depends on how fast the transition state is reached in case of SN2 reaction and the rate depends on the stability of the carbocation in case of SN1 reaction. How fast the transition state is reached means 
See, if there are bulky groups, the attack will be slower down. There are these bulky groups, these there are three, three R's over there, right? On which the attack has to be taken place. Say there is a carbon atom R, R and R and there is an X. So these alkyl substituents, they will ripple the coming nucleophile, right? And this will slower the reactivity or slower the rate of reaction. Now let's see this example. Now, see this uh, structure students, this is the methyl groups and this is X. See the green color indicates that these bonds are going to remain intact in the product and whereas this bond, the red, this will be cleaved. Now there is attack by OH ion. So what is this ion? This is an OH ion. That is OH ion which is formed by any of the base. The reaction as it is a 1 degree alkyl halide. Right? See to the, the carbon to which halide is bonded is again bonded to 2 hydrogen atom. So this particular carbon is a 1 degree alkyl halide or this molecule is a 1 degree alkyl halide, right? Now this attack is not possible. Why so? Because there are 3 methyl groups, right? Now say attack, if at all the attack takes place, that is the orbital of the incoming nucleophile, that is a hydroxyl group, if it overlaps with the tail of the sp3 hybrid orbital or of the carbon, that is one of the lobes of it, Likewise, there is again uh, this uh, overlapping of the orbitals here with the leaving group and one of the lobe of the p orbital, right? I told you this thing in details in our previous session. The overlap takes place like this. This is these are one of the lobes. Okay, say so this uh, is the lobe of. Even if it happens, then see students, in the transition state, this carbon is pentavalent, right? Plus, it is having such a big group with it. There is such a bulky group over it. So, in this reaction, there are five groups bonded to the carbon atom at which the substitution occurs in the transition state, right? Now, as a result of which, there is more crowding in the transition state and more compression energy resulting in much slower SN2 reaction. See, students, see, these many, these big molecules, there is three methyl groups are there, plus one carbon over here, and such a big thing has to be compressed in one molecule. So, what is required here? You need energy or it this for such a big molecule what is required energy is needed to keep these entities close to each other so due to this compression energy what happens that the rate of the reaction slows down right so this is what is steric hindrance or steric repulsion so students more is the number of group bonded to the carbon atom at which substitution has to be taken place the slower will be the reaction right